Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching today. Today we're going to a watercolor painting and it's a special kind of watercolor painting. It's called a line and wash. Um, I haven't ever done this before so you're going to see me experiment with it for the first time. Um, so that ought to be fun. Um, it's a picture of an old, uh, I call it a vintage gas station. It's one that was probably there in the 1940s and 50s <clears throat> and it still exists in a town near where I grew up in Indiana and uh, I had a small photograph of it. It wasn't the greatest photo but I was able to uh, manage to get this sketch off of it. Um, the sketches are on my website if you want to get them. There should be links down below in this video uh, that you're watching so uh, you could try that. Um, I'm not going to go to the computer today and talk about it because basically it's just a photograph. I was able to uh, get a sketch but the sketch didn't really show up very well on my broadcast software so I haven't been showing it but uh, I want to show you this so uh, this is this particular uh, sketch has been done with uh, black black ink and it's uh, a form of ink that's hopefully going to resist watercolor so that it doesn't uh, run when I uh, put watercolor on it but a line and wash basically is uh, where you put the, the uh, the sketch on in ink and then you come back and uh, fill it in uh, as you would a normal watercolor painting. That's a that's a basic way to do a line of wash. There's other ways to do it. If we have time today I may show you another way that I've learned that uh, I would call it more a wash and line type of uh, painting but uh, nevertheless this is uh, what we're going to work on today. I want to go over the paints and the brushes here. This is my typical uh, setup. My uh, Sterling Edwards palette, my Sterling Edwards uh, brushes. I have the the big uh, one inch brush. It's bristle. I have a, a flat that's a half inch. I got about three rounds here and I got a script liner. So I don't know if I'll use all those but uh, I have them all available. And then I have uh, a few of these uh, black uh, marking pens that I have. Uh, the one I did this particular sketch with is this one. It's called, these are Faber Castell uh, and uh, they're basically, uh, th these are pure black and they come in various uh, sizes in terms of the, the nib on the, t the tip of them. I have a fine nib here that uh, I did a sketch with. I also have a bold nib. It's more like a brush. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but this is good for coming in. When you come into a place like this and you're looking for some, some darks that you want to accentuate, you can kind of come in and sort of paint a little bit with this to uh, make it uh, darker in some areas. Um, there's a lot of shadow and dark in this particular uh, photograph so I'm going to try to use this instead of trying to mix up a, a black uh, which is possible to do. Uh, you can also in a line and wash it's very typical for uh, artists to use a technique like this where they put in the, the dark uh, paint if you will. Is really black ink. Uh, and by using paints that are uh, very transparent, uh, this, this will show through very nicely. And uh, so I'm going to put down a little bit of a shadow here. This shadow comes down about like, I want to say something like this, has a little angle on it. Um, and it kind of turns around, it, it hits this particular post over here. So we're really starting the painting here by filling in some of these dark uh, areas that I want to uh, to be really dark in shadow. And uh, so it's just kind of a way to uh, get yourself started. And uh, I just realized I didn't have that showing on the uh, broadcast software. So uh, I've now switched that over. Um, when I edit this video I'll correct all that and you'll see it the way I did it. But uh, right now we're just filling in some darks uh, around this. These posts are all very uh, very much in shadow and uh, I could be doing this with dark black paint but this is more the line and wash type of technique I guess to uh, use this black marker to make your darks and uh, there's some dark shadow under this old bench. Um, so this is, uh, like I said, it's an old gas station that's uh, been around. I, I don't even know if it's still there but I was able to find this uh, 
photograph and I kind of liked it so uh, uh, that's kind of what we're going to do work on today and uh, put a few more dark shapes in here um, something like this so I'm just sort of outlining some areas that are dark have a have dark around them <clears throat> a couple of building out buildings here this back here I may do that with paint um, but um, it's really uh, this this hose that's on this this is an old time gas pump folks I don't know if you've ever seen anything like this or not but um, this is the way gas used to be um, put into cars this did not this was before the days of electricity and uh, they didn't have pumps and motors and that sort of thing to pump the gas into your car these were gravity fed so this old gas pump as uh, it, this top up here is uh, an area that's filled with gas there's a pump hand, hand pump down here that they pump the gas up and it sits there and uh, when you want gas in your car you say I want five gallons or four gallons and uh, they pump it in um, wouldn't work in today's cars very well because uh, you may not know how many gallons you need so uh, it's kind of an interesting way in areas where we didn't have electricity actually I was had to had an experience of using a pump like this in Idaho a few years ago went to an old general store that had one of these pumps outside supposedly it was one of the two working manual gas pumps left in the United States and uh, this pump doesn't have a shutoff they take the, the nozzle and stick it in your in your car and uh, when your tank fills up it just runs out the top so uh, it's kind of a kind of nifty uh, <laughs> tell them you want six gallon and if you need five and a half the extra half gallon kind of ends up on the ground so that was kind of a unique experience but uh, that area was an area called Shoop Idaho and uh, I actually put some gas in my car at that time so it was a fun uh, little experience anyway that's the the marking pin this other one has a much smaller nib that's used to uh, put in the uh, these lines that you see here I'm not going to spend much time with this I'm going to start painting with uh, our uh, regular paints here the, the wash but um, the idea is to uh, have a couple of three different kinds of nibs the nib is the tip uh, of these ink pens and you can get wide lines narrow lines uh, use a brush like that to get a very fat line um, so that's really uh, what I wanted to show you with these with these pens um, and uh, so now we'll get to painting so uh, that's pretty much my uh, little discussion on that and uh, I'm going to get my uh, palette in here for the online viewers okay um, so let's get going I'm going to put uh, this may go kind of fast I don't know um, but I'm going to put in a little bit of sky and uh, wet some of the paper just a little bit to uh, get some uh, to be able to run some of this paint around put some sky in and then uh, let that dry while we're working on other parts and I'll come back and put a layer of trees up there after this um, so I'm going to just get some ultra blue I didn't go around and tell you the colors in the palette I've told you many times um, but um, I will tell them to you as we go through here I'm using ultramarine blue right now um, I have uh, Payne's gray cobalt blue ultramarine blue uh, royal blue permanent violet gray green gray burnt umber burnt sienna quinacridone scarlet bright rose brilliant orange quinacridone gold permanent yellow deep and cad yellow lemon these are all Holbein paints and uh, they're very beautiful very transparent and so when you see uh, uh, C 
see this, uh, see me paint with this, you'll see these uh, colors coming through. Uh, not the colors, you'll see the, um, the dark ink well, should shine through these paints very easily. So I'm just mixing in some color here to get a little bit of a sky, not much. Uh, soft edges, put a little bit down here, maybe like that, right down. Okay, so uh, soft edges, soft edges. Soft edges will tell you these are clouds. I give you too many hard edges, it may look real like a photograph, but it wouldn't uh, translate very well. So let's just put in a few more. Don't want rectangles. So that's just sort of the, I'll put it down here like that, okay. So that's all we need to do for the sky. There's not much to that. Um, and uh, that's all we, uh, all we need to do. If you have any questions, folks, please uh, key them into the uh, chat window here. And uh, I have another computer up here by my arm and I will be able to uh, check and see uh, what you're asking or what you're commenting on. And, uh, Maybe be able to answer you back or give you a good answer of some sort. Okay, so I'm going to stay out of that sky. I keep telling you when you get a sky in, just leave it alone. Don't keep going back in there and messing with it because you'll just make it worse generally. So that's the sky. All right. Um, so look at this building now. We've got, uh, it's pretty much a white building, but it's really a, a beat up old dirty gray building for the most part. So I'm going to get myself some... Uh, little Payne's gray and add it to this blue, uh, kind of gray that down. I want to put a little uh, burnt sienna in there too. And Burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine make a very beautiful gray uh, as well. You can get several different shades. You can get it shaded toward the brown side. You can get it shaded toward the uh, blue side, depending on how what kind of mixture you put in there. But uh, I'm just going to put in uh, some shadows in here. This is uh, wet on dry. I'm not using, I didn't really wet this paper down all that much. I did put a little water in it, but uh, uh, just for the sky. It's more, mostly to let that sky uh, blend in up there. Okay, let's see here. It's blue, I don't need that blue. I'm gonna put a little more brown color in here. So in this case, you, you're going to have a lot of hard edges at the uh, where the uh, paint meets the these edges. Um, they're going to be hard because of the, the black ink, right? And I'm able to paint right over that black ink without any of it running. It doesn't uh, it doesn't reconstitute itself and uh, make an ugly black mess. Um, up here on the left, I'm going to put a little more, uh, let me see, what do I want up here? Let me get a little more brown. I'll put a little more brown up there, put some warmth in it. Up here, these probably were brown boards at one time, but we're just going to throw in a little bit of brown on there, mix it up, put a little more shadow in there. Something like that. And you see, I got a hard edge going all along here. So the way to fix a hard edge is to come back with some water, clear water, and just touch the edge, pick up, take the paint out of your brush, just soften that edge. Okay, so much for that. Let's look at this little uh, roof line here. It's a uh, rusty color. So I'm gonna see if I can get a rusty color going here. I'm going to use my uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of my uh, brilliant orange. Should be able to get a, a rusty color. And if I want to make it a little dirtier, I'll stick a little bit of that uh, 
burnt umber in there. I'll show you what I'm talking about here on the palette. Um, get just a little darker in some areas. Uh, but like here, we just want to come down and do some quick marks like this. I don't want to cover the whole thing. I don't want to fill it in like it's a coloring book, even though this painting style kind of looks a little bit like a coloring book in some, some regards. Uh, put a little cool motion in here, come back get a little warm. Mixture of warm and cool, cool and warm. Uh, gives it uh, some nice dynamics. A little more gray over here on this side. It's a little more out of the light, I guess. There's more trees on this left side. This is 300 pound Fabriano Artistico uh, watercolor paper. And uh, that's what I'm painting on, which is what I usually paint on. Um, and the sketching actually with, the, uh, with my uh, black ink there was a little bit, a little bit bumpy. I don't know why the uh, sketch didn't show up very well on the on my software when I was trying to broadcast it to you. Usually my sketches come out pretty nice. Um, this one for some reason didn't like it. I think it may be because of the um, fact I had this sketched on uh, watercolor paper. Normally I have a sketch that I show you, which is on uh, like tracing paper and. Uh, Usually comes through better on that software for some reason. Um, let's put a few. We got some nice warms in there. Maybe a little yellow to warm it up in some areas. I see some yellow in my. Just a little bit. Make it warmer up there. From this is from light bounce from the ground. Um, I have a uh, well. I got that little yellow thing going there. I'm gonna put a. <clears throat> This little barn back here has some green in it, green and dirty green. So let's just throw in some water back there. See that? In this case, I don't have to make all those little lines. Normally, I would take my brush and get a dark, and I would be stamping in these these lines back there to represent the siding on that. Don't have to do that. So I'm just uh, putting this in this. Uh, old gas station had uh, things you see here are uh, these are uh, oil I think these are canisters that have oil in them and uh, in those days people didn't buy a quart of oil in a can they would have to go to these pumps and pump it out and uh, so they, these were two, two different uh, brands or two different weights of uh, motor oil and uh, they had little, little hand pumps on them, and you go in there and just take your uh, some sort of a, a funnel type container and uh, pump it in there and uh, put it in your car. So the uh, idea was to uh, let you be kind of self service, although. Uh, these guys probably waited on you back in those days. I don't know that they don't wait on you too much anymore. These windows are just putting a little panes gray in there. Almost panes gray right out of the tube, pretty much. Um, and um, this machine, this place had a an old Coke machine sitting on it on the on the porch and had a bunch of signs that said Coca-Cola and uh, I can't really I shouldn't really uh, duplicate those signs with uh, in my painting because that is a trademarked logo and uh, so I just kind of left this so you can't really you know what it is but you can't read it exactly and then these other signs said Coca-Cola and I actually just sort of dotted them in with my, with my brush or my my uh, ink pen, so that um, they didn't really show up all that well. And uh, that's sort of a trick I learned to try to 
don't want to violate anybody's copyright and uh, they might not like me putting their logo in my art. So if you can't exactly tell what it is, I can argue that it's blurred enough that it's not obvious. <clears throat> okay, so that's the background there. I'm going to put a little more, a few more dirty splotches in here and just because it is a, a beat up, run down old uh, building. And some of this. Mix it up. Um, so it's very much like I would normally paint anyway. Uh, it's just that the, the lines are not pencil lines and they're not, uh, they don't fade out. They're, they're easy to see. Um, all right, this, um, try some more of this red here. I'm going to get some of that orange a little bit of this orange color for these barrels. This is so old they had a logo on them for golf oil, which I can't remember when I've seen golf oil lately. Probably long out of business. Or been purchased by another oil company probably. Okay. I want to come back and put a little more dirty stuff on there to kind of make them look like they're rounded. For one thing, I want some shadow on one side. So I'm going to just drop in a few dabs of Payne's Gray. Put a couple of them up here. All right. Kind of says they're some sort of a barrel. Uh, all right. <clears throat> what else we got going here? This little bench. Um, just going to swipe it in real quick. Get some brown. Get a little of my burnt sienna and lighten it up. Throw in some of that brown. There's a, it's a darker brown burnt umber maybe with some Payne's Gray in it. And we'll put these in underneath to be darker than that. <clears throat> See, I almost matched that dark shadow color right there with uh, my Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber. Okay, let's come in here and put in these, this, this post. So this is a case where I'm trying to stay inside the lines. I'm actually painting it a lot like it would be a normal watercolor painting. Um, there's actually a, uh, I think this was a, um, like an old log or something laying here in the front. Something like that. Back here, there's a lot of debris and garbage and stuff back there. I'm not going to mess with that too much. Um, put in this little step area right here. Have another post here that I need to fill in. Stands out. It's very obvious. See if I can sh shade that a little bit by putting in some more dark paint to make it so it's not quite such a hard edge, dramatic 
change. A bit too much there. Let's lighten that up. All right. So far, I've only used this half-inch brush, other than what I use for the sky. Um, I'm going to get this red color. The red color of the Coca-Cola sign is mostly red. It's got some dirt and junk in it, so it's not a pure color. But um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to get my small. I'll use a, this brush to put in some of the paint, and then come back and. Uh, that's a different red than that slightly. See if my rose is too rosy. Put a little orange in it to uh, change that color a little bit. Down here. Let me put in this, uh, get my smaller brush. I'm getting this number four round here. <clears throat> kind of come in here and see if I can Sort of bit paint around these letters just a little. Doesn't have to be that neat because it's all kind of dirty and beat up. I really don't want you to pay that much attention to it. So there, this uh, swooping logo there, that kind of tells you what it is if you're familiar with uh, the brand. Come in here and do the same thing to this little logo. They had a couple signs that all said the same thing. So I treated them both the same, made it very sketchy so that you can exactly tell what the logo said even though most people know. So it's just my artistic interpretation of the thing anyway. So there we go. So it's that. Um, this particular machine, cola machine, I'm going to do the same kind of thing on it. I'm going to paint this background here to leave the uh, letters open here. Mm, like this and this. And over here like that, like this. So, getting my uh, signs all painted here at once, but the same color, so I'll just kind of put it all in. It won't be the exact color, but necessarily, but it's going to help tell you what that thing is sitting there that looks like a refrigerator. Okay, now. mess with that too much. Um, we've got some things in here that are like the signs and so forth where the pop comes out. I'm going to just put this in real quick and then come back over it with some other some quick colors to go over that. Um, this dark in here to help define those windows just a little more. Okay. Um, what else? These uh, things over here are dry now. I'm going to come back and put just a little bit of blue paint. Oops, I dropped my brush. Sorry. Hold on there. Everybody still with me? All 
right. <clears throat> How are we doing on time? Well, we're doing about 30 minutes. Okay. Going a little slower than I thought. I think. I'm not sure. I think the side of this machine is a similar color here. Uh, like that. so much for that the front of it's got sort of a, a grayish color things here to help define it there we go all right that's good enough um, over here this door it's got some windows in it that have some a little bit of color in them so let's turn a few windows here a little longer than I thought for this but uh, it's kind of fun it's uh, looking like a, an old beat-up building for the most part um, got some signs up there around the top Just paint this in and let the let the ink work display what it is. That's part of my difficulty. I haven't done this before, folks. I think I told you that. So it's kind of all new here how this is working, and uh, don't have to be quite as careful painting around things. Uh, A bit of dark down here, and that little tank um, over here on the side. We got similar type stuff going on. So just put it in there and let it let it rip. The brown up here. Lighter color, I'll put some of that uh, yellow up in here to get some light bounce. Hope you can give this a try. This is uh, kind of a new, new way. You know, Chrissy, that, uh, that's the way the old pumps were. They were looked just like that. And, uh, I don't know if you heard me tell my story about actually getting gas from one of those pumps in Idaho, but uh, it, was, it was a fun experience. <clears throat> the guy walked out and says, how many gallons you want? I said, well, I don't know. I've, I have a gauge on the inside, but it doesn't tell me how many gallons I need. So uh, we just started pumping and uh, watched it until it ran over and we stopped. <laughs> it was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Put in a few grassy-like things. Put in a put in some more grassy-like things over here. Put some. Uh, start pulling some 
green backgrounds in here. There's a little bit of an old one. Oh, come on. All right. Okay, so that's enough for that right now. Got to put this other orange guy in. So let's see if I can get a color that's uh, similar to these over here. It's really kind of beat up and rusty and From the bottom, we'll pick up a little dirt and stuff from the bottom and pull it up. Got a little thing that flares out here. Okay, got some dirt up here. And just a little There's where the gas would go. I don't know what these things are. I didn't see those on the previous pumps that I had experienced. I don't know what they are. But they were in the photo, so I just stuck them in here. And our and this, I don't know what this is. This looks like a exhaust pipe or something that lets maybe fumes out? I don't know. I, uh, I didn't see that on the pump that I pumped out of either. But this brought back some nostalgia for me. Oh, let's see. I'm going to put in a little bit of this uh, greenish yellow color in here. Like it might have had something that looked like gas in there. I'm just letting the uh, stuff sort of run. All right. A little building in the back. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that gravity feed was quite a experience. I, uh, that's exactly what happened to my car. It, it just went on the ground and I said, I think it's full. Sure enough. Putting a few more things here. All right, let's get back on this house back here. I want to put a little something dark in here to Kind of show there's something going on back there. A few things. Got a little, we got about tin roof here, some kind. Got maybe something that's got some color on it back here a little bit. And then uh, kind of a roof line. job on the side. I'm not sure what that was for, but a bit of shadow in there in some areas. All right, um, that's pretty close to being done. Uh, we'll put some trees in the top. Uh, get me a big flat round brush here and pull out some some colors for my, uh, for this grassy, it's actually gravel here and it's more grassy back that way. So I'm gonna make some grassy stuff going back here. There's a, some sort of a woods or something back there that, uh, this up here in front I'm just going to kind of 
pull the brush really fast. See if I can make some gravel like marks. Because I'm using this 300 pound paper, there's a lot of dimples in this paper. So when I pull the brush fast, you can see the, the marks. This wants to go back there. All right. Um, in the distance back there, let's see if I can get a, some colors that start looking like or grasses and that sort of stuff or trees or whatever back here. I'm using a big number 12 round here. So I'll pop these in. I probably need my flat brush a little bit along along this architecture here. Really what these flat brushes are good for. They can come in here and just put this stuff in so nicely. Around something that's vertical. Angular round brushes don't do a very good job of that, in my opinion. Um, but when you want trees and stuff to go like this, you can just sort of do a lot of dry brush up there like that and uh, get some really nice effects. Come down in here, lighten it up a little bit, maybe change the color. Actually, if there's a lighter color, it would probably be up here on the top, up here. Yeah. So let's just kind of throw that in and let it uh, make myself a good abstract shape. I don't want to make this look like a circle. Um, there's probably some more over here in this area. So let's throw a few more over here. Leave some air pockets, air holes. Maybe come even down in here. I think actually went clear off the top of the photograph here. So what I'm trying to do is leave some interesting shapes here, not just the, what I'm painting, what, what I'm not painting. So you got to think about that when you're painting. Make sure that the uh, you don't leave odd looking shapes around. I'm putting in some darks, adding some accentuated darks in here. See this area that I needed to uh, finish out in here. I didn't really do a good job there. Up against this pipe, exhaust tube or whatever it is, it doesn't stand out now. I've totally sort of destroyed it with values. So when you give this a try, you can modify your technique and do whatever, however you like. And uh, I think that's all I'm going to do today. Uh, I'm going to take you through this other painting, but I was going to actually do a wash and line with that. Maybe I'll do that next month. I'll come back and do a, it's more of an abstract type of uh, a painting, and uh, it might be the subject of a whole session itself. I'm going to just put in a few more 
you can sort of fill this in a little bit to make sure it's not all really white. I don't want your eye really going down here that much. Uh, what else do I need to do? I got a little tank there. It looks like a propane tank or something. I'm not sure what that thing is. Uh, it's probably a sort of a steel color or bluish steel. So I'll give myself some uh, put them in here. Darker. Make it a little darker. Something like this. There we go. Well, I got that color. I'm going to come back and touch this old guy and make him stand out there a little better. Okay. All right. So there's a uh, pretty good example. The only thing I might try to do, I may wait until after this is over with to uh, do it. Uh, but I'm going to put maybe a wash on here to sort of darken this shadow area. I don't know if you can see that, but this should all this area here should all sort of be in a shadow. If I come over there with a wash right now, I'm afraid uh, it's fairly dry. Um, get a big soft brush here that uh, give me just a nice grayed down, a little blue, a little Payne's gray, and uh, sort of want to try it. See, I may run this whole thing now, folks. This is probably what you're going to see happen here. I'm going to cut right across diagonally, like I did these things, like here, like that. Okay, nice smooth brush, quick stroke, a lot of water. Um, and just put it in really, really fast. It's called a glazing wash, right? All of a sudden you're seeing this thing all get just slightly darker, very slightly. It's not too bad. If I keep, if I go back in there now, I'll keep, I'll mess with it and I'll ruin it. But I want to just have a good sharp angle going across there, and uh, I think that did it. Um, maybe there's a couple more areas here down below that I could do something similar. Like this, there was some shadows that kind of stuck out under here, like that. And there's probably some shadows back in here that I didn't really address. I could probably have some things going up like this. Kind of ref represent a, a bit of a shadow there. What else? I think I'm about done. Uh, I'm going to put a few maybe tree trunks in here and some of these trees just to uh, help it uh, look like there is some branches and stuff going on. Let them come out here, up here, like that. A few things. A couple down here maybe that even come out. Yeah, that putting a shadow in like that really is kind of neat. Um, Uh, let's see here. I got way too many, to, way too many branches and uh, stuff to paint in here. So I'm just kind of picking and choosing what I want to show. Don't want to uh, paint everything. I'll drive you crazy. Um, so just some things that look like there's some tree. Really light. All right. Um, darker area maybe up here. This could be just a little darker. 
<laughs> too dark probably it will lighten up um, to some extent but need to have that tapered a little more all right I'm gonna run it if I keep messing with it um, but I don't have anybody here to tell me to stop I got a few things behind the Gulf Oil logo there so they're kind of beat up run down all right I'm gonna call a halt here and find a place to stick my name here I think it's still fairly dry I don't like that brush I want to get a strip liner I need a finer a finer liner here a lot of paint in it that's going to do it um, for now so that is a line and wash um, I could probably keep messing with this if I want to keep screwing around with it but I think I'm gonna I keep saying I'm gonna stop and then I don't stop all right I'm stopping <laughs> Okay, folks, there you go. There's a line and wash, and uh, I hope you like it. I hope you give it a try. The original photo's out on my uh, website. The sketch is out there, and uh, as I look at it now, I see the, uh, the, dark, the dark blacks here really are almost too dark. Uh, they really kind of draw your eye. It looks like there's a frame around that. Um, if I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't put those in with uh, black ink. I probably would put them in with paint. Um, lighten some of these dark areas that were too dark with the ink. I uh, pulled out my uh, set of pastels and uh, just picking up the uh, white the white pastel chalk and use that <clears throat> to very lightly put in cover up some of that real dark dark areas and then smudge it with your finger slightly and all of a sudden it lightens that whole whole area up so that it's not nearly as dark it sort of turns it to a gray which is fine. Over here, the same way I did it over here. You could use something besides white if you wanted to change the color slightly, but you have to get that really dark black ink out of there. Even over here, I want to put a little bit, maybe just to lighten those up a little bit. That ink, that, this, is, this is basically uh, paint here, but I used a lot of that ink, full strength ink here in some of these areas and made it really too bone jarringly dark. <clears throat> so that's what the painting now looks like after uh, doing that. Hope you have good luck with it. But uh, that's, uh, that's the way a line of wash typically works. and. Uh, I think I'm going to save maybe till my next uh, class to uh, do a wash in line. I'll show you some new techniques I've learned uh, to do it that's much more uh, impressionistic and that sort of thing. So uh, we'll try that in another session. And uh, so I hope you uh, give this a try. Check out my website. Check out my Facebook page. Uh, leave me some comments if you like it. I will edit this so it'll be out on, the, on my website or out on YouTube in a couple, three days. And uh, Check out my Patreon site if you'd like to give me some support. I'd appreciate it. That'd be a place to do it. And uh, so I think that's all I want to 
tell you today. So until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye.